Hello, pre-cal students. This is the second video for the review. And what I'm doing is I'm going back to give you the basics of the GCF, the greatest common factor, before we jump into the regular factoring that we're going to have. So this is just if you need any practice on GCF. It also incorporates multiple variables. So let's look at these four examples. And what the greatest common factor is, is it's the greatest value that is a factor, which means, remember, factor means multiply, is a factor of or divides evenly into the group of terms that you have in your expression. Now, notice all four of these here, these are expressions because they're not equations. Equations have in an equality of some site, there's some sort, there's a relation of some sort. These are just expressions. So we're going to simplify each of these expressions by taking out the greatest common factor. So let's look at the first one. When we look at greatest common factors, we are looking at the largest factor that divides evenly into all of our terms that we have in our expression. So if I look at the first one, so I'm looking at example one. Example one has 2x squared minus 4x. So what I have to do first is I have to look for a constant. And our constant factors are going to be our numbers. Remember, any numeric value that is just that, a numeric value 1, 2, 3, 4, 6.25, 975,216, those are all constants because numbers always have the same value, theoretically. So 7 is always equal to 7. If I say, if I have 7 cars or I have 7 calculators, that's the same quantity. 7 is always 7, so that's why we call these constants. Then I'm going to look for the variables. So the first thing I'm going to factor out are the constants, and then I'm going to look for the variables. Those are your x, y, z, r, s, anything that is that has its place being held by, most of the time what we see in standard algebra is a, is a letter. And they're called variables because they vary. They can take on different values. You saw in the previous video when we graphed a function, if I changed the x value, it changed the y value. Those are your ordered pairs, your x coordinates and your y coordinates. So these are why these are called variables. So let's look at example one. Let's look at the two constants I have. I have a two and a four. And the signs do matter, but right now we're going to keep this simple. I didn't do any lead uh, coefficients or constants that had negatives. But you might be faced with that, and you'll see that might happen when I do the video on factoring with grouping. So to take out the greatest common factor, 2 and 4, what is the largest number that divides evenly into 2 and 4? And that's 2. So if you wrote this in technical terms, you would write the GCF of 2 and 4 is 2. Now that's how you might see it written. But we're not going to require you to do that on the test. So that's just kind of an FYI for you if you want to use that. So first of all, between 2 and 4, I can factor out a 2. So now I've handled the constants. Let's go and now handle the variables. So now I have to look at my variables. Now I've got an x squared and an x. If I look at both of those, remember x is essentially the same as x to the first power. That means 1x. So between x squared and x, I can actually take and factor out an x. And when I do that, now I have to rewrite my expression with the GCF factored out. So essentially what you're doing with your GCF is you're dividing both terms. If you guys remember the distributive property, and I'll come over just to kind <clears> of, <throat> excuse me, give you a, a little bit of a reminder. When we look at the distributive property, the distributive property is something that's mashed into your brain s since you were in, I believe, sixth or seventh grade math, maybe a little earlier. 
But the distributive property has to do with distributing. You think about if you're distributing, if I'm dealing cards, I'm the dealer, I'm distributing an even amount of cards to every person. So if every person gets five and I'm giving and I'm the dealer and there's three people, it's going to be three times five. You're actually distributing evenly. When you have the distributive property, you've seen it written like this. So that's A times B plus A times C. Now that's how you've probably seen it written. Let me make this a little bit. There we go. And basically you're taking the A and multiplying it back in. So you're breaking the parentheses apart. That's the distributive property. When we're factoring, we're going backwards. We're doing almost the reverse of the distributive property. So I'm literally dividing each of these terms by what I'm factoring out. It's reverse distribution. So what's 2x squared divided by 2x? That means if I took the 2x out, what am I left with? And you're actually left with x. If I distribute out the 2x from 4x, 4x divided by 2x, the x is, this is, remember, x to the first. The 4 divided by 2, and it's a negative because you can see the sign right here. It's a negative. I'm going to be left with a 2. And then x divided by x is 1. I don't need to write 2 times 1. X, just 2 is sufficient. So this is the factored form of number 1 when I pull out the greatest common factor. So let's look at some of these other examples. I'm doing the same thing. So now I'm in example 2. So I'm going to look, first of all, at my constants. Okay. I have 6x squared. I've got 9x, and I've got 1. Now, in order for me to proceed, I have to have something that's common to all three of these constants. 6, 9, and 1, the largest value that divides into all three of those is only 1. Therefore, I don't have a constant greatest common factor. So I don't have anything to factor out numerically. Let's look at the variables. So I have x squared, I have x, and then I have nothing here. There's no variable, right? It doesn't exist. So I don't have anything in common variable-wise. So when you're asked to find something, the greatest common factor, something like this, it's already simplified. already simplified. Basically what that means is the GCF is 1 between those three terms. GCF is 1. When we talk about factoring trinomials, that's a different, uh, a completely different concept, but this one is already simplified. There is uh, the GCF equals 1, and there's no need for us to factor out 1. We're kind of wasting our time. <laughs> Factoring out and dividing by 1, you're going to get all the same answers. So let's move on to the third one. On the third one, example 3, let's look at our constant values first. I've got 4 and I've got negative 8. So what is the largest number, the largest factor that divides evenly into both 4 and negative 8? And that is going to be 4. Now I'm going to look at my variables and look what I have, two different variables. So let's look at them one by one. I've got x and x cubed. What is the largest x value that goes into both x and x cubed? And that's just basically x or x to the first. I've got one x and three x's so I can factor out one. Now let's go to the y value. If I want to look at my y value, I've got y squared and y to the first. I can actually factor out a y. So let's go back and see what's left now that we have factored out our values. The first thing, I'm going to divide all of both of those terms by my GCF. So I'm going to take 4xy squared and I'm going to divide it by 4xy. 
Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I don't need to write 1 unless that's the only thing there. Those will reduce to 1. Those will reduce to 1. Now remember, that means 1 times 1 because these are all multiplied. These two, this is going to drop to y to the first, and that reduces to 1. So what am I left with is just y. I've got a subtraction sign. I've got to honor the sign. Now I'm going to take the 8xy cubed, and I'm going to divide it by 4xy. And I'm not going to make as many marks on this one because some people are just going to be studying off the PowerPoint. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. x cubed over x to the first leaves me with x squared. And the two y's are going to reduce to 1. So there is no y left on the inside for this one. So this is your final answer. Again, I factored out the 4, the x, and the y, and this is what I was left with on the inside. Okay. Now the last one is a little trickier. I can actually combine the middle two. You see the 6x here and the negative 5x? I could put those together. But what I want to do here is I just want you to look at all of the terms, and we're going to do grouping here. And for grouping, I'm going to actually go on to the next video, because grouping is something that people tend to prefer grouping sometimes, over regular factoring, the AC method, or slide and divide, or MF DARM. So I have this one here to show you how to do grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the next video. If I combined all of these here and asked you for just the plain GCF, you wouldn't have one. So before I will finish this on the grouping video, but I want to show you how to get it started. Okay. So when you put things in groups, you if you looked here, once again, you look at all the constants. I have a 3, a 6, a 5, and a 10. There is no GCF there except for 1. I shouldn't say no GCF. The GCF is 1. Excuse me. So I have 3, 6, 5, and 10. That's not going to help me. If I were to combine the middle, I would have negative 6x and negative 5x, which gives me negative 11x. Then I'm looking at 3, negative 11 in the middle, and 10, still no GCF. So we're gonna show, I'm going to show you how you factor individually within, and then on the next video I'll finish this one and go right into grouping. Let's look at the first group only. So we're going to look at how grouping works in the beginning. Just these guys. What do the 3x squared and the negative 6x have in common? So let's look at each of these individually. I've got a 3 and a negative 6. And again, we'll honor the signs. So I can actually factor out a 3. If I looked at the variable terms, I have an x squared and an x. And remember, that's x to the first. So I can actually factor out an x. Now what that leaves me with on the inside keeping our color scheme consistent, is if I divide 3x squared by 3x, that leaves me with a single x. I have to honor the subtraction. And then if I do 6x divided by 3x, that leaves me with only 2 because I've got x and x. That's what I'm left with. Let's go to the second group. Now let's look at the next two terms as a group. So I am going to look at the lead here, the sign. So I have negative 5 and I have positive 10. Now under normal circumstances, I can take the 5 out as a positive. When you get into grouping, you want the lead sign to match the lead sign of the other term, which you see right here, that's a positive x. In order for me to make this a positive x, I can't divide out a 5. I would literally have to divide out a negative 5. 
and you'll see the purpose of this in the next video. Now I'm going to look at my variables. Well, if I look at my variables, I have an X and then over here I've got nothing. Okay, I'm going to put a little question mark. I got nothing. So there's no variable that I can factor out. All I can factor out is that negative 5. So when I factor out a negative 5, notice the impact this is going to have on the signs. I have x left in here because I took negative 5x and I divided it by negative 5. Do you see how the negative divided by the negative gives me the positive x term I want? Now, if I divide negative 5 from positive 10, a positive divided by a negative <clears throat> is going to give me a negative. Okay. Now, you can see what I've created here. I've actually created a situation where I do have another GCF. And you can see that GCF. And I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and finish this on this video just to help you guys out. What is common now between my two groups? What are they both multiplied by? They're both multiplied by X minus 2. So guess what I can factor out? I can factor out an entire X minus 2 from those two terms. Think of X minus 2 as just a single factor. What if it was a 9? I could factor 9s out. It just happens to be a binomial. That leaves me with, once I factor that out, 3x minus 5. And that is a way to factor by grouping. So you see that this is what we normally get when we do AC method, slide and divide, MF DARM. This is how you do this one by grouping. So this is just a little bit different, and there will be grouping practice on the next video.